Today I'm going to assemble this 12 by 20 by 7 foot carport, and it's an aero carport. And um, this box right here contains the roof panels. And this box contains some of the base frame. And this box over here also contains the base frame. And I removed the accessories. This goes around the sharp edges. Um, these, I believe, you can use to anchor it into the ground. I might use something different, though, to make it stronger because we're going in cement. And these are the screws that they provide. Luckily, my side of the garage here is about 20 feet, so it's going to match up almost perfectly with the length. But lay the first bars out like this. You got those at the end. And these little pieces in the middle are going to connect the two. Four end pieces. These are six inches wide, so they need to go inside that three inches, and then this will need to go inside this other part three inches. These screws are really nice because they literally just go right into the metal. You don't need to pilot any holes. Now I have the two base rails screwed together and assembled. Next you want to lay out the vertical frames. And they're going to go together like this. Joint there, there, there. Just put in that first vertical frame, or they call it a rib. There's the seam. Two screws in each seam. And I got the rest of the frames up. This is my last one. You want to make sure that sign is facing out there. That's the last one. And then there's another one of those signs way in the back there. So there's a male and a female end in each one of these. And those joints, there's one here, 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 and down there. I got the 12 by 20 frame, so there's a total of five ribs. I have this positioned about right where I want it, about 14 inches away from the garage. I got this stinking electrical box right here that I need to make room for and make sure that this door can open see how it kind of clears that so I'm gonna make sure that door can open because that paneling will go down right below those two screws this is how you check if it's square you put the tape at one end and you go diagonal to this end and I have just over 256, 256 and a quarter, we'll just say 256. And now I'm measuring the other way, and I have 260 and a quarter, so I am four inches on not square, so I gotta adjust this a little bit. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pull this side back just a hair. So there's my foot. Maybe pull it back a few inches. Okay, so I have it squared up at around 259 now. And I want the sides to be straight, so I just have a little rope that I put around the side there, and it looks like it's hitting everywhere, so it's pretty straight. Here you can see that the middle needs to be kicked in just a, a little bit. It's sticking out, so I'll kick that middle in so it's touching the rope so it's straight. There we go. Yep, perfect. And I just put a chalk line there so that I can 
and see where to line up the frame just in case the frame moves they'll put it back on the chalk line and there's that chalk line i just went around the four corners and marked it so i know right where it needs to be to be square before i start um, fastening it to the cement the next step is to fasten this car this carport down to the cement and what I'm going to do is first make these holes a little bit bigger because they're not quite wide enough for the screws that I'm going to put in. Okay, I had to make that hole a little bit bigger. That's the original size, but I had to make this hole bigger because I have these wedge screws that are going to go in to the cement. So I have a hammer drill that I'm going to use and a bit to do that. Here's the wedge bolt. Okay, this is a half inch and then this is a half inch masonry bit and I'm using a hammer screw and you're going to need to dip it in the water occasionally or it'll get too hot or else the bit will break. You got to dip it. Okay, I drilled it down far enough and I just drop that in there and that as you hammer this down that wedge will expand. I want it about a little thicker than the bolt so that should do maybe one more hit and Okay, I got it all up. I have five anchors on each side here. The wedge anchors. Then I have five on the other side. Ready to put on the roof. Okay, I just opened up the box. There are these shorter pieces here in the front. These will be in the middle of the carport. And then there's these longer ones. The longer ones go on the ends because at the ends it needs to overhang by 10 inches. So that's why they're extra long. So they can overhang on the front and the back by 10 inches. So here's the first piece. You notice they have pre-drilled holes here and then pre-drilled holes for that. But there's the overhang they have for these longer pieces, which is about 10 inches. And there's the white side, I mean actually a grayer side under here and then the face Side facing the sun is more of a cream colored. Before you put on the next panel, and this is the next panel, you gotta put down some of this tape. And I put it on this side of the hole so that the water won't run in from here. So I put it here, then the water will stop here. So that's how it lines up. You wanna to try to center those screws and those bars. And um, that's where the beetle tape is, so it keeps the water from leaking down into the holes. But, um, and then this hole, there's pre-drilled holes. You see that in here? You want these holes to pretty well line up with the holes underneath the panel, and that way you know that you're really close. You don't have to, but it's best. Yeah. Quick little pointer, if you line up that hole and the other side hole, first, then it's easier to line up these other ones in the middle. Putting up this first panel is the hardest part probably of the roof, I'm assuming, because you have to, so you have to like line that up and you want to pull that over to the middle and it kind of lines up everything evenly and it squares everything off. So once this is done, the rest of the roofing is very simple. Don't forget to check like the levelness and the plumbness of these. Um, mine are straight up and down on this side, but tilted on that side a little bit. I think these things are just naturally tilted a little bit. The main idea is that they don't tilt that way. If you're gonna have them tilt, you gotta have them tilt in towards the structure, not out. I finished this side, but I'm gonna show you how I did that side. It's done the exact same way. Notice how that top one 
it's kind of split down the middle, centered from there to there. Okay, so this is the first one we put on, that ridge cap. And then these will just slide right up underneath here. All of these will slide right up underneath. It goes up underneath these two. And you gotta make sure you put the beetle tape on this side so when the water comes in, it stops here and it doesn't go in these holes. Here's the second paddle, panel in line. Notice how I'm sliding it up underneath those two. And I'm gonna slide it up underneath that as well. Okay, I am just about done now. I got everything on except this last side here. There's one more row, four more panels to go. Putting the first of the last row here in. You see how this slides underneath and then we'll slide underneath here as well. Okay. And you want to adjust the front a little bit too. Until it's pretty flush like that. Keep in mind you always want to start at the top with that screw in and then that one next. Yeah, keep that in mind. And then this one last. And um Remember to put your tape, butyl tape. I did a, this is like a new little trick I learned, but if you leave this little covering on it, um, you, and you put the other panel over it, it won't stick and it's easier to slide the panel in. And then once you have the panel in, then you can peel this tape off. So um, I've been using two inch clamps to kind of hold it down for me down there. Of course you don't need that, but it makes it a little easier for me. So I have the panel, I slid that in place, and it's, like I said, it's easier to have this on, and then once you have the panel on, you can just throw, go through and rip the tape out. And I am on my last two screws. I already pre-drilled them a little bit. Okay, the last thing you're gonna do is put on this edging so that it's not it's kind of sharp without it. So they have this protective edging and it gives it kind of a finished look. So just put it around the front and the back of your car port. And it just crimps on really easy like this. If you use that beetle tape, it really does waterproof the carport. I haven't had any leaks. It's been a few storms now, and I haven't seen any leaks in here whatsoever. It's been really nice. So use the butyl tape. Okay, um, I anchored mine down to the cement, but some of you might not have cement and you're just going right into the ground. If you're gonna go right into the ground, the carport does come with these things and they're like fish hooks. Um, you're gonna wanna fish this line through these little holes and then you're gonna wanna crimp these things on the end. These things slide on it, just crimp them on the end. And then you have this that goes into these. So this goes, this comes with it, it's a rod that comes with it. And it goes in here and you're just gonna pound that right down into the grass. I'm not going to do that, but you're going to pound it down maybe a foot. Um, and then it will, it, it won't be able to pull up because it's kind of like a fish hook. So that's how you use the ground anchors if you don't have cement. And then once again, this is the thing that slides on and you're just going to want to tighten these really tight with a wrench. <laughs> 